All right, first off, I want to welcome you to my new YouTube channel. Decided that uh, I'd finally get a channel that's more in line with what I'm trying to uh, present here. So, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. About, oh, I want about nine months ago, I had the opportunity to test several different laptops. You see my old channel, those videos. I had a M4800, um, a W540 when it first came out, a ZBook 1715N, as well as my ZBook 14 here. Shortly after I did those videos and posted them, we got in some laptops that we got because uh, upper management saw them, thought they were pretty, and, and wanted them. And so I didn't really get a chance to test them before we deployed them. And that's the uh, Dell M3800. And We've had that in production for about as long, or not quite as long as I've had my ZBook 14 in production. I really wanted to do a comparison between my ZBook 14 and the Dell M3800 because I feel like in a lot of ways they go after a similar customer. They technically, excuse me, they're technically uh, Ultrabooks, uh, but they're not just Ultrabooks, they're Ultrabook workstations. So they are, as you can see, both thin, they're both light, and yet they're powerful. They have Core i7s, they can have 16 gigs of RAM, they have dedicated video cards. So they're meant not just to be thin light, but also be a, not quite a desktop replacement, but, but as close as you can get to a desktop replacement without having a 7 pound laptop. As far as my ZBook 14, I've truly enjoyed using this laptop. It's been a good machine. I use it at least 10, 15, 20 hours a day sometimes. I ha always have it on me. I specifically wanted a ZBook 14 when we were testing the systems because I was using a W530 and when you have to have your laptop on you at all times, that can get be pretty tedious when you have to have a uh, laptop that weighs six plus pounds and a power adapter that, will pay, that weighs, you know, a pound and a half, two pounds, so you're really carrying out around a lot of weight. And I know nine, ten pounds doesn't seem like a lot of weight, but it can be, especially when you're doing other stuff. If you're traveling, if you're going around with your family, with kids, it, it's a lot of extra bulk that wasn't, I didn't feel was necessary for what I did in my position. As far as the system itself, these systems are not currently powered on. I'm not doing a review of the OS or even really a performance other than they both work. They both run Windows 7 just fine. And, well, when I say just fine, the ZBook 14 has no issues. One th big thing with the ZBook 14, as I said, I use this constantly. You can see it's it's quite dirty. There's a lot of dust on the screen, fingerprints on the screen. I really need to clean it. But if you look here on the wrist rest, on the touch pads, the other wrist rest, and on the keys, there really isn't a lot of signs of use. It has held up really, really well. The one place it hasn't held up so great is this rubber around the top edge and I kind of expected that it's not my favorite design aspect I guess if you go to pick it up it does give you a nice texture here that makes you feel like you have a secure grip on on the system but you can see along the edge a couple places like here it's worn through it's got a little shiny but you really don't notice it, it, except for the light on my camera is on and it's bright and it's reflecting off of it. But for the most part, you actually can't really see that too bad. Um, in my other videos, I go over it, uh, the ports as well, but it has plenty of expansion. VGA, four USBs, a display port adapter, full-size display, a full of normal-sized um, Ethernet port, and then... A, a port for a docking station. I do have the docking station. I use it every single day at work and I'm very glad to have that docking station. It makes my life a lot easier when I go in to plug at work. And then of course the power port. Because, because of the way it's designed um, you can have the docking station like I said and I also have an external battery. And the laptop itself has a three watt, or excuse me, a three cell battery. I can get three to four hours if I'm using pretty light. Hour if I'm doing really heavy 
graphics, things like that, hour to hour half with heavy graphics um, on this uh, three cell battery. This is a six cell battery, so you get nine total. And I can get, if I'm using it fairly lightly, you know, mostly just reading Word documents, surfing the net, things like that, turn my brightness down a few notches, I can get 12 hours between the two batteries combined. Um, typically I get between 8 to 10. I can get, I can run a full day between um, the external battery and the internal battery. And combined, they're still significantly, it's significantly lighter than my um, W530 ever was by itself. So... And it's a really nice accessory to have. Um, and also, you know, you don't once you set up a system, you don't get into the system very frequently. But you know, it, this is really nice if you ever have to service anything or you ever just want to clean it out, which is something I am in desperate need of doing is cleaning it out. But you know, you have your SSD hard drive here. You can add a, a secondary SSD. Um, Here's a three cell battery. It comes out easily with just two switches there and there. You have your memory, your Wi-Fi adapter. You can clean your fan easily. So it's very easily serviceable, manageable, upgradable. And it comes off with one hand, kind of need two hands to get it back. Oh, I got it with one hand this time. To get it back on. So I've really enjoyed this laptop. It has not been completely without its flaws when I first got it. I did have a few problems with um, it crashing and with it disconnecting from Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi I found out was actually my Wi-Fi adapter here, here at home and I just got a new Wi-Fi adapter here at home and no more issues with the Wi-Fi. And the crashing, it ended up being video drivers for the AMD Fire Pro uh, 4100 that's in it. I finally went through, deleted all of HP's drivers and any driver I could find on there. I turned off uh, Windows from pulling drivers from Windows Update. And once I did that, I downloaded the drivers from AMD's website. And once I did that, um, I haven't had a problem since. The other thing I've done is when I'm at home specifically, because I tend to put my laptop down on soft surfaces, whether it be on the sofa next to me, or on the bed next to me, or on the chair next to me. I tend to set it down with the air vents on the bottom. I don't know if I was causing it to overheat. I never got any temperature warnings on it, and it never seemed like it overheat, but it would have a, a, a driver crash. And some of the things I read said that that driver crash could be caused by the video car overheating. And so this, if you can see here, when it's on the bottom, and there's a channel here of air that is unobstructed because it pulls from the back with a little bit of a lip there. And you just see it. Um, so I, and I, ever since I did those two things, when I'm at home, I use the mic center battery just on it all the time. That way I also know it's just always charged, which is good. And with the driver updates, I haven't had a crash on it since. Um, so let me go ahead and put my ZBook away and then I'll go over the M. Uh, 3800 because the story with that is going to be quite a bit different. Alright, so when I put my Z book away, I figured what I was going to do is come back and take the base off the 3800 so I could show you the internals. But then I realized I forgot the very specific screw. It's a hex 5, oh, if my camera will focus, a hex 5, there we go bit head that fits the 10 screws that go around the bottom of the case in addition to the two screws under this flap. So to take the bottom off this laptop, you saw on my ZBook 14, which is the same on the 15 and 17, there's a simple switch that you move to the side and then the whole bottom slides off and you're good to go. This one has 12 screws. These two under this flap are both uh, just a standard Phillips head. These T5s are... A T5 screw bit is not that abnormal. But these screws themselves are actually very hard to find. And it has actually taken me months. These are replacements because 
they strip so easily. You hardly look at them. Like you try to unscrew them by hand and you'll strip them out just with your fingers. Um, I don't know what material they use them out of, but they are not a very sturdy screw. Um, and I'm not going to unscrew it. But if you can imagine, the battery on this is also, I want to believe, I believe it's also a nine cell. And it comes across the whole bottom of the laptop. It covers the whole thing. The hard drive is a little um, SATA card here. And this does actually have dual fans. There's one here. You can just see through the grate, and then one on that side with the video card and CPU. I believe they're there. Well, I know they're there. I, I, just, I believe that one's the video card and that one's the CPU on the bottom. And the memory is about right here on the laptop. So that's the internals, which you can't see. Um, the bottom is carbon fiber. It does not add much strength. Where the ZBook is all metal, top and bottom, the carbon fiber is quite flexible it does not offer strength the strength comes from the system top which I don't prefer I guess that's how they made it thinner give me a second to, to open it all right and I apologize my light has turned off now both this Dell and my ZBook have the highest available uh, screen resolutions of the perspective models um, and so my ZBook has a uh, 1080 resolution this Dell has I cannot remember the screen off the top of my head both have gorgeous viewing angles both are beautiful screens for their respective uh, screen sizes especially this Dell the Dell is a touchscreen which these came with Windows 7 downgrade and you can get them with Windows 8 but as a workstation for work, Windows 8 is still not the best operating system. And so, and a touchscreen with Windows 7 is kind of pointless. So I don't really understand the extra cost in a touchscreen on a workstation laptop. Uh, screen's pretty though. But the funny thing with the screen is, even though it's a beautiful screen with at such a high resolution, it actually makes it pretty hard to read. Uh, especially if you're browsing the web or anything like that. So half the time you have to drop your resolution to a 1080 resolution anyways. So I don't understand the extra cost of the screen unless you're using this for something specific like, you know, photo editing where you need a higher resolution or a higher resolution screen makes things a lot easier. The keyboard on it is actually very nice. And in some ways I kind of like it to more than my... Uh, ZBook because the keys have just a little bit of a, you know, they're not completely flat like they are in my ZBook. They have nice travel, nice feel for a laptop on them. You know, obviously no, no mechanical keyboard. Uh, but they, this laptop has been my loaner, has been my backup laptop, so it's actually had very light use, very minimal use. And you can see there's wear on the keys, more so than even on my uh, ZBook uh, 14. There is significant wear on the touchpad and this has actually been replaced by Dell once already so this isn't even the original touchpad it's already had to be replaced and I'll go over the replacement here and then there's somewhere here on the wrist rest that you can see kind of along there so while this soft this is a soft rubber material it's very nice to feel it's very smooth very soft uh, the touchpad has an okay feel to it uh, but it shows wear quickly, it shows fingerprints, it shows spots and stains. And so you, know, you go to a presentation, if somebody else sees your laptop, it's going to look a lot more abused than any abuse you've ever given it. So I'm not real keen on that. Now, every single one of these 3800s that we've had, and we've had, we have seven of them, has had at least one major repair done on it. Most of them have had multiple repairs. Uh, the touch pads have gone out, quit working. The power buttons have quit working. The screens have quit working. Um, when we first got them, the, the um, deployment of whatever, uh, you know, the, the deployment that Dell puts on them of the operating system wasn't very good and had a lot of crashes. So we've just had 
just a constant um, stream of issues with these. One of the ones that is reoccurring constantly with this particular laptop, uh, in general, all of them have had this problem, is every now and then the system will crash blue screen. And when it reboots, it finds that there is no hard drive. You go into the BIOS settings and there is a hard drive and you reboot again and sometimes they'll find it, sometimes it won't. Sometimes you have to go in and run a diagnostic. Sometimes you have to take 12 screws out, unplug the hard drive, plug it back in and then it will recognize it. Sometimes you have to uh, do a rain dance, stand on your head, spin around in circles three times and then it will recognize it. So that's been an ongoing problem that Dell has not been able to resolve for us where the system simply no longer recognizes that a hard drive is plugged in. Because we have seven identical ones and I have a spare, typically what I do is I wait till I get, you know, I'll give somebody the spare and when I get their system, I swap the hard drives. So I take their hard drive out of their system, put it into the spare, give them the spare, and then I get a new spare and I plug the, you know, the, the spare's hard drive into the new spare and that works. And then the user's hard drive into the old spare, that system will work. So swapping hard drives is typically what is the quickest and easiest fix for that. Now, again, to do that, there are 10 of these tiny little hex five screws and two screws under this plate. And I will put in the description, if anybody wants, the Dell part number for these screws because it has literally taken us eight months to be able to get replacements for this screw. We have ordered screws from Dell multiple times on multiple occasions. Nobody has been able to get us these screws. So until just uh, a couple weeks ago, actually, we finally got it. I have the part number and when I get to work, I'll make sure to add that to the description or if somebody comments and wants it, I'll make sure I respond to their comment. So that is the Dell M3800. All in all, of the two, if you can already tell, I much prefer the HP ZBook. Oh, I haven't even finished with the Dell yet. So one thing the Dell likes to do is overheat. Even though it has two cooling fans, it overheats and crashes frequently without really doing even, uh, without really doing very much processing. It seems to be mostly the video card that's the problem on this. It gets just too hot and it causes the system to crash. So on all of these, even though it has a dedicated video card, we actually disable the dedicated video card so that it only runs off of the Intel video so that the systems do not crash with uh, overheating. Um, they also, the a HP ZBook, the 14 only has a two core Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM. This has a four core Core i7 and yet I can run more virtual machines on my system without issue and they can be exact the exact same virtual machines that I run on this and this just cannot handle them it will start to bug out and crash battery life on this if you have the dedicated video card uh, power um, turned on the Nvidia video card turned on Battery life on this is pretty woeful. Uh, maybe two, two and a half hours if you're being very careful. If you disable the video card, which you then have, you can't run it at the native resolution of the screen. You have to put it up to a 1080 uh, resolution. Otherwise, the system just bogs down, can't handle it. Um, if you do that, then you can stretch it out, push in three hours. But when I can get three hours with typical use easily out of my ZBook on a three cell battery versus this nine cell battery, it's not even close to being acceptable. Now, a couple other things that this does not have is it does not have an ethernet port, a dedicated ethernet port. You have, it does come with an ethernet dongle, you know, a uh, USB to ethernet dongle, but that's just one more piece for my end users to lose, to be perfectly honest, I go through, I've gone through a bunch of them in the last nine months. 
and they're not terribly expensive, but they're also not cheap. And it'd be, you know, something I could spend budget on somewhere else. Um, and then it runs off Wi-Fi, which uh, Wi-Fi is okay, but it's no replacement for a dedicated Ethernet connection. It, it just isn't, um, especially if you have to ever transfer large files from one system to another, or if you're um, doing a remote desktop into multiple virtual machines, there's no replacement for a dedicated Ethernet cable. And for this being a workstation laptop, I kind of find that unacceptable. So if you're looking for an Ultrabook, specifically an Ultrabook laptop that's a workstation, I highly recommend going with the ZBook 14 over the Dell M3800. With the 3800, it's just plagued with problems. It really can't handle the hardware. I think they worked too hard to get it to be too thin. Or they worked too hard to get it thin, and they made it too thin, and it just doesn't handle the heat well. Um, it's not built very well. It's not designed very well. It's not easy to access the internals, which on a work machine, I believe it should be a lot easier. If it was a personal computer, different story. But this is meant to be managed by an IT department for a company for a higher end you know th this is such a pretty machine I, I the aesthetics of it are are great um, and so it definitely is a computer for a CEO a CFO you know that chief level or C level executive in a company you really want it to be able to be shown off but when you have Dell dispatch out three or four or five times in one week on a system, which happened just a couple weeks ago for me, it's just not really a viable option. So I highly recommend the ZBook 14. It's been a great machine. We have a couple of them in our office and have been without issue other than the couple I mentioned. Um, and But this has just been plagued with problems. I do not recommend it. It's a beautiful machine. It's very attractive to look at. If you never use the touchpad or the wrist rests to where they start to wear out, um, keyboard does have a nice keyboard. If you run it at the lower resolution, battery life is okay if you disable the uh, internal video card, but you shouldn't have to do that. Um, which is kind of a pity because they have the uh, M4800, which is the you know much thicker desktop replacement machine and that one is very strongly designed there's just a couple of things about it I didn't like it had a very small touchpad on it um, and I didn't like it CD-ROM drive but you know those are pretty negligible where this one I think has some very glaring flaws so I hope in the next update of this you know, I definitely think that this was trying to compete with the uh, Mac uh, MacBook Pro um, and I just don't think that this try at it is going is very good and I hope that their next try is going to be better because it definitely has a lot going for it it's very attractive it's very thin it is very powerful if you figure out the cooling situation um, I wish that they would change the bottom so that it was easier to access the internals um, and so that is that if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments also feel free to check out our Amazon partners link down below any anytime you use that link and purchase anything on Amazon a very small percentage comes back to this channel help support us and the things that we're doing here so I appreciate any and all help that I've received and thank you for watching